Hello, my name is Jensen Smith. I'm a Sports Medicine 3 student here at South Tahoe High School. And for my Sports Med Project 4 on medical journal research, I decided to research treatment for the eye disease keratoconus. Let's begin with some basic anatomy of the eye. The white part of your eye is called the sclera, and it acts as a protector for the rest of your eye. The cornea is the thin, clear membrane on the outermost part of your eye, and it prevents things from getting inside of your pupil, and it acts as a lens to focus light into your pupil. The iris is the colored part of your eye. The pupil is the center of the iris, and it allows light to come into your eye. The retina takes the light that has come into your eye from the pupil and translates it into an image, and then sends it to the optic nerve, and the optic nerve takes that image to the brain for processing. So what is keratoconus? Keratoconus is characterized by the bulging outward of the clear membrane called the cornea. This is due to squinting, and uh, the more you squint, the more you bulge your cornea, and this causes thinning of the eye, which results in astigmatism, poor vision, and eventually blindness. Uh, this disease presents itself in four main stages. Stage one is diagnosed when any bulging outward of the cornea begins to occur when the patient is not squinting. Stage two is characterized by notable nearsightedness and a larger bulge of the cornea when the patient is still not squinting. During stage three, an optometrist will typically use a tool called a pachymetry to measure the thickness of the cornea. The measurement should be between 200 and 400 micrometers in order to confirm that you have stage three keratoconus. Uh, this is concerning as a normal person would have a corneal thickness of about 545 mil micrometers. Uh, in stage four keratoconus, central scarring of the cornea is visible to the human eye and the thickness of the cornea is less than 200 micrometers. At this point, the only option for treatment is a corneal transplant. Uh, but stepping back a few steps, when you are first diagnosed with keratoconus, your doctor will often prescribe you soft shell contact lenses or glasses. This is an aim to stop you from squinting because you'll finally be able to see properly. If that doesn't work, your doctor will prescribe hard shell gas permeable contact lenses, which essentially force you to not squint because they're harder to move your eye with. And if the hard lens is uncomfortable, then they could do what's called piggybacking, which is where you wear a soft lens under a hard lens to provide the same amount of uh, visual acuity and still stop you from squinting. If no form of context works, then more desperate measures need to be taken, then a procedure called corneal cross-linking will be performed. Essentially, they take fibers from parts of your cornea and attach them to different strands on your cornea in order to make it bond stronger and make it harder to squint through. If the patient still has sufficient thickness of the cornea, then an insert will go in called an intact. An intact goes under the cornea but on top of the iris and it changes the shape permanently and essentially makes you feel as if you're squinting all the time without squinting. Uh, if none of these have worked yet, then a topography guided conductive keratoplasty can be done, which utilizes radio waves centralized to one point on the eye to smooth out the eye and make it so that the scars that have been caused by the keratoconus will become less noticeable and the visual acuity of the patient will go up. A computer will map the topography of the eye and then it will tell the optometrist where to put the uh, radio waves in order to smooth out the eye. And finally, if none of the other procedures have provided uh, adequate vision for the patient and the keratoconus has progressed far enough, then eventually you will just need to get a cornea transplant. They take a cornea from a dead cadaver and then as if it's healthy and you're healthy, they can replace the entire cornea. But even after this procedure, you will probably still need to wear glasses or contacts because the donor probably had an astigmatism of some sort uh, or other confounding variables contributing to your poor vision. After post care, as with any surgery, you must take extra care. But with eyes, it's especially important because if any injury happens to your eye, you may need an entirely new cornea transplant and that would require you to also get entirely new glasses and more prescriptions to just be able to see for the rest of your life. In conclusion for this project, um, I learned a lot. I decided to do this project because I was diagnosed with keratoconus last year. Um, it was a weird diagnosis to get because I'd never heard of it before, but apparently it's very common to get in your teenage years. And I just didn't know how to react to it, so this just gave me an avenue to be able to talk about it and learn more about what might be in my future, in case I stop wearing my glasses for some reason. But yeah, it was just very nice to have that more in-depth understanding of what could be happening to my eyes. Uh, thank you for watching.